Hey guys, Crazy Postman here. So if you remember a few episodes back, I took my Luba 5000 and did a little bit of harsh surgery on it to maybe help with the deck clogging situation. Well, in the comments, some people said there was an easy way that they didn't have to get out the saw and perform surgery, that some people have 3D printed some part. So I started looking around and I found this set right here. And I think this is supposed to take the place of the guard that I cut off. It's a 3D printed part. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the Luba 3000 that I didn't modify, and we're gonna take off its guards and replace it with this part and see if it performs any better or worse than what I did to modify my Luba 5000. Look how dirty these guys are. It hasn't even been a week since they've been cleaned. All right, let's get their heavy butts up on the table. We'll put the 3000 here up first, since this is the one we're most interested in. We'll go ahead and throw the 5000 up there too, so I can show you how it's doing after a few weeks of working with my modification. So the first step in this process is to remove the plates. Removing this first one. Yeah, it's already all clogged under there. Take out our grass puck. Put it over here with these other four that I already have over here. <laughs> you get a good weekly grass puck out of this thing. Lifting this one up. You can see it has a nice grass puck as well. Go ahead and, oh, gross. This other side had a stick wedged under it. So here's what I took off. You can see this section over here is where the problem is. So what we're gonna do, instead of cutting this one like I did the other one over there, this little cap is gonna go right on that and keep everything held down without me having to modify this. You see this little locking nub here? There is a hole for that. I'm not sure what it's for, but it's there. So maybe it just helps you align up the right spot. Okay, I'm not gonna like crank it down. Once it starts getting tight, I'm gonna stop. So there's the first one. Now let's go over there and work on the second one. Interesting. This side doesn't have a little nubbin anywhere that I see. That's what the 3D printed option looks like to hold down this rubber piece and keep everything watertight. Let me go ahead and take the plates off the other one over there and we'll compare what this looks like compared to what I did. <laughs> I did get one error last night during a mow that said motor overload. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's jammed. Both of these are spinning pretty good. This one probably has some stuff under it. I can feel a little bit, but it, it could have just went through a thick section or hit a stick or something. It could have really been a legit motor overload. Of course, when these things are jammed, it is a motor overload. A little bit of grass under there. You know, to be honest, I think what I did does not look that bad compared to the professional pre-parented option over there. That looks pretty dang good. But maybe that design there will help with this situation somehow. Maybe it's designed to do that. I'm just gonna take both of them off while I'm here. I take these off so much, I purposefully don't really crank them down tight, but I shouldn't have left it that loose. Ah, uh, just a little bit under there. Not horrible. This screw looks like it's not tight. Oh, it's tight. I'm stripping it. 
That's as tight as it's gonna be. So there it is. What do you think? My jigsaw adjustment or the 3D printer adjustment? So let's just get in here close and check these out. This is the 3D printed option. These are the Crazy Postman Special that I just took a jigsaw to. You know, one of the, the benefits of something like this is you still have your factory ones. So, you know, I still have them sitting right here. If I needed to go back to factory for some reason, I could. And also, these are not completely useless. Besides catching grass and clogging things, they do serve a purpose. They kind of protect the cutting plate on the edge from hitting pavers, rocks, cement slabs, and they also keep the cutting plate from bottoming out. Like if there's a hole or something, this will drag on the ground first before the blade hits the ground. So these are not completely useless. Everybody shouldn't just take them off just because I do. It's completely uh, your own discretion, a personal choice. So I'm going to put everything back together now and I'll just continue using these two robots here on the property. In the future I can let you know which one performs better, if they perform equal, if I end up not liking it and going back to factory. Of course, I'll let everybody know. Well Houston, we may have a problem. I just put both plates back on and um, this one spins pretty good. This one doesn't spin at all. What the heck? very tight something's rubbing under here okay we're good now they both spin remember that screw that was slightly sticking up that I couldn't get to go down anymore yeah that was the problem when they 3d printed one of those pieces the screw holes were just slightly off on one of the sides but we persuaded it to uh, go a little bit deeper so we're, we're good now hopefully Well, that's going to bring an end to our experimental episode here. Now, just keep in mind that I don't necessarily recommend or endorse this product or doing what I just did. Uh, that's going to be your own discretion. I will link the product in the description if you want to check out what I used, but I don't really recommend anybody do it. Um, let me do the experimenting and messing up my Lubas instead of you messing up your Luba. I will continue using these and I will let everybody know if a problem arises from me doing this little operation. Right now, Luba 5000 needs to get to work and Luba 3000 is going to go to bed. So thanks for watching this episode and I will see y'all in the next one. Sorry for the torture you're about to go through 5000. It's been a long time since we've had a chance to get to the back. Good luck, Luba 5000. I wish you well.